Darkness, intense darkness, has engrossed the entire planet, and humanity is acting out some of the worst behavior ever seen in the chronicles of history. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us in the lecture series, The Theology of Time, the worst thing to ever happen to the devil is truth. Truth is as important to our mind as oxygen and water is to every living creature. We need the pure truth, the undiluted truth, the untampered with truth. Well, we are pleased to announce that that unadulterated truth from Allah God is not to come, but it is here. Allah taught the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Allah taught the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad this powerful message of truth. And today, if we want to continue to hear this message of truth in its purest, in clearest form, we need to go to the one Allah raised and fashioned to continue the mission of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the boldest, fearless, and most courageous truth bearer and truth teller on the scene today. The national representative and most exemplary student of the most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. As a wise, as a wise, enlightened, and astute leader would do, Minister Farrakhan has prepared engineered and orchestrated an elite unit of tenacious and relentless student ministers that are diligently spreading the message of truth throughout the globe. Today, we will be hearing from one of the best and brightest of this unit, one of the MVPs on the resurrection team, a spiritually dynamic student minister, a shining star in the ministry class, a profoundly gifted Islamic evangelist who not only illuminates the teachings in his home city of Indianapolis, Indiana, but has been electrifying and mesmerizing audiences all across the country. Praise be to Allah. On blog talk shows, radio programs, and in numerous teaching facilities, educational institutions, webinars, seminars, and conferences. This highly sought-after preacher of Islam is an author of several books and has a collection of mind-stimulating, spiritually elevating lectures that are in high demand. In his plethora of lectures and presentations, our keynote speaker continually hurls the light of truth with tenacity that vanishes Satan's lies and falsehood, like bolts of light and vanishes darkness. Family, friends, guests, and visitors, with great joy and anticipation, we present to you a soldier on the battlefield of truth, a steadfast defender of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Please receive student minister Nori Muhammad. All praises are due to Allah. All praises are due to Allah. All praises are due to Allah. Not some, not most. All praise is due to Allah. Thank you so much, sisters and brothers. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. We are eternally grateful to Almighty God, Allah, for his merciful intervention in our affairs in the form of a well-made man named Master Fahd Muhammad, and we thank him for coming among us and raising up in our midst his messenger, Messiah, in my humble opinion, the greatest black man that ever walked the earth other than God himself. I'm talking about the Georgia-born God by the name of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. He is the man behind the men. If there were no Elijah Muhammad, you wouldn't be talking about a Malcolm X. If there were no Elijah Muhammad, you wouldn't be talking about Kwame Ture. 
If there were no Elijah Muhammad, you wouldn't be talking about H. Rap Brown. If there were no Elijah Muhammad, you wouldn't be talking about Muhammad Ali. If there were no Elijah Muhammad, we wouldn't be here talking about the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. All praises are due to Allah for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, the architect of a brand new civilization. All praise is due to Allah. And we wouldn't be talking about those two if it wasn't for this one in our midst today that is without a shadow of a doubt a divine leader, teacher, and guide for you and me. He is a combination of the spiritual DNA of both Master Fahd Muhammad and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad combined in one flesh. He is the Son of Man. He is the Spirit of Truth. He is the Messianic Man of the moment. He is the premier FOI of the Nation of Islam. He is the Father to the fatherless. He is the example of what a human being should be. I'm talking about the man that saved our life. If it weren't for him, most of us wouldn't be sane right now. Most of us wouldn't be sober right now. Most of us wouldn't be married right now. Hell, keeping it all the way real, most of us wouldn't be alive right now were it not for the uncompromising love and teaching of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. All praises are due to Allah. Oh, I'm feeling good today. We just came out of a class yesterday, which is the class of the gods. It was without a doubt a divine revival and a cleansing session for the soul. It feels so good to see so many soldiers out today. The media has done a good job vilifying the image of the black male and, and, and a good job at sanitizing the image of the white male. But when the math is done and the studies are in, the stats say that, the, that in motor vehicle theft, arson, assaults, fraud, embezzlement, dealing in stolen property, vandalism, weapons charges, prostitution, sex offenses, crimes against family, child violations, liquor law, drunkenness, disorderly conduct, vagrancy, curfew, loitering, drug dealing, drug abuse, homicide, and rape, the white male is the leader in all of them categories. But that ain't what it looks like. But today, pan the camera. Show this room. This is not a group of pan sagging. This is not a cigarette smoking. This is not a knee on, bending on the knee gambling group. Everywhere we go, people want to know who we are and where we come from. And we tell them we're Muhammad soldiers made by Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. Take a good look at what a new black man looks like. All praise is due to Allah. And we want to say to the sisters that yesterday we made a promise to God and a promise to God's man that we would go home and be better husbands better fathers, better saviors, better redeemers, better maintainers, better protectors, better providers, that we will be the example of what a new black man looks like in the hells of North America. That is the pledge we made, and our word is our bond. So whoever you married to, you got a new man coming home. You got a better man coming home. He's cleaner, he's wiser, he's stronger, he's more committed. All praises are due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan told us, he said, there's a need in our community for a universal change. And it has to start with the man. They did a study on June 14, 2014, on 60 Minutes, the show is called The Rogue Elephant. And what they found is there was a park in South Africa called Kruger Park. 
And in the words of the white scientists, they said in Kruger Park that the elephants have began to quote unquote, I'll overpopulate the area. And you know the white man's solution to every problem that shows up. It's not to reform, it's not to correct, it's not to alter the environment. They always want to kill and destroy. So they went to Kruger Park to stop so-called depopulation. And they killed all of the adult elephants that they could find. And then they helicopter airlifted all of the young elephants and dropped them off in a place called Pellensburg Park without their fathers, their mothers, or without any adult supervision. Over the course of time in Pellensburg Park, without any adult supervision, they, they began to call these elephants rogue elephants because the, the elephants start fighting and killing one another. The female elephants have stopped looking out for their young and they start laying under the tree and not doing any motherly duties anymore. The male elephants stopped being a protector of the tribe and of the community and, and before long, the elephants have began to engage in what they called illicit sex. As time went on, they noticed that the rhinos were beginning to die. And they looked and found that all of the horns were still intact, so they weren't being killed by the poachers. So they videoed and found out that the elephants were not just killing one another, that they began to kill the rhinos and had offset and threw off the whole ecosystem of Pellensburg Park. Well, when they seen the problem, you know what their solution was. It wasn't to reform, it wasn't to correct, it wasn't to help or to aid, it was to go in and kill and destroy. And one of the scientists raised his hand and said, before we go in and began to murder all of these young elephants, I just want to try something. And he proposed if we can go back to Kruger Park and find some of the adult male elephants. And if we can find any adult male elephants, let's just helicopter airlift them and drop them off in Pellensburg Park and see what happens. They helicopter airlifted the male elephant from Kruger Park to Pellensburg Park, and in a matter of two weeks, the elephants stopped fighting and killing one another. The females began to come from under the tree and began to mother the young. They stopped engaging in illicit sex, and before long, the balance was brought back into the environment. I said, hell, that sounds like what's going on in the black community in the concrete jungles of America. We don't need no more police. We don't need more jails. We don't need more government programs. We just need the black man to be mentally helicopter airlifted and dropped back off in the hood. And that's what happened yesterday. We were helicopter airlifted by God's man, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And we on our way back to Houston. We on our way back to Miami. We on our way back to New York to reestablish and balance the ecosystem. All praises are due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. We have to turn our colonies back into communities. And there is a big difference between a colony and a community. We, 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 lose, we use a lot of words in our vernacular that, 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 that we use that as interchangeable, but they have two totally different meanings. See, there, there's a difference between looking and seeing. Yet we use them to look at something means that the eye register light and we recognize that there is an object in front of us. But to see means that we don't just use the two eyes, we use the third eye to give a proper evaluation and accurate appraisal of what we are looking at. Therefore, we see. There's a difference between hearing and listening. 
All it takes to hear is for the eardrum to register the vibration of sound, but in order to listen, there has to be a third ear involvement that interprets what we've heard. There's a difference between a daddy and a father. We use them interchangeable, but, but a daddy is a man that knows how to plant a seed in the vaginal tract to bring birth to a child. But a father is a man that knows how to show that child that came into the world how to successfully navigate in the world that he brought him into. There's a difference between a daddy and a father. Oh, praise is due to Allah. In fact, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that if you look at the word father and the word father, it's the same word, just one letter added to it. Why? Because the job of a father is to make sure that the children go farther in life than what he ever went. In fact, the, the, the goal of a real parent is not for your children to be like you. The goal of a real parent is for our children to be better than us. Am I telling the truth? All praises are due to Allah. A, a, a colony is when people live in an environment, but they do not own the businesses or the property in the environment. In every major city, you got a Jew town, a Chinatown, you got a little Korea, maybe even a little Havana, and maybe even a little Haiti. But I haven't seen a little Nigeria, or a little Ghana, or a little Africa. Have you noticed that? When you come to our communities or our neighborhoods, you find, you find a white man on payday loan spot, a Vietnamese on nail spot, Korean on beauty supply spots, am I telling the truth? And an Arab or Pakistani on convenience store attached to a gas station with an Arab standing behind four inches of bulletproof glass selling cigarettes, black and mouse, drug paraphernalia, and pork rinds, even though he don't eat or use none of that. We're going to have to regulate our affairs. We shouldn't allow anyone to come in our community and disrespect our women. I don't care who you are, you don't disrespect the queen of the planet Earth. You don't disrespect the mother of civilization. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, oh, praise is due to Allah, that we must respect and protect the black woman. He taught us that a nation can rise no higher than its woman. He taught us that there's no such thing as a no good woman. Any no good woman was made that way by a no good man. He taught us that the mother is the first nurse, the first doctor, the first teacher. And the minister said it like this, mama is God in baby language. So I don't care who you are, Eric. Pakistani, Jew, white man, or black man, when you see our sisters, our mothers, our daughters, our aunties, you better show respect and reverence to this black woman wherever you find her, or the army might have to come visit you. All praise is due to Allah. In, in our neighborhoods, we are loyal patrons to all of their businesses. But how many times have you went inside of our barbershop and seen one of them getting their hair cut at your shop? We've got droves of little league sports teams in our community. How many times have you seen their name sponsoring anything in the community? So you mean to tell me they come in the community and suck the economic blood from our community and don't give us nothing back?
Something wrong with that mathematics. We've got to change the way we think about where we live. In fact, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that, the, that our people live in the sun. The reason our people live in the slums is because slum thoughts live in our mind. We, we call it the hood. An abbreviation for neighbor, why just the hood? Because the concept and function of neighbor is missing. But if you look up the word hood in the dictionary, of course, yes, it is a, a, a suffix that's attached to a base word that means the condition of the base word, but it also, as a proper noun, is a piece of fabric that's attached to the back of a shirt, jacket, or a coat that is used to cover the head to protect it from the environment. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad is telling us that what's going on in the hood is a direct result of what's going on underneath the hood. Where we live at is nothing more than a physical manifestation of the collective consciousness of the people that share space and time with one another. If the hood is dirty, it's because the mind is dirty. If the hood is disorganized, it's because our thoughts are disorganized. And this is the reason why they are afraid of Farrakhan because we don't carry weapons in the nation. But we've got a weapon that we've been given from God's man, more powerful than an SK, more powerful than an AK-47, more powerful than a Desert Eagle. This weapon is the weapon of the truth that God revealed to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And when we hurl that truth at falsehood, we knock out his brain. In Proverbs 23, verse 7, it reads in the Bible, As a man weareth, so is he. It, it don't say that? As a man driveth, so is he. Don't say that either? As a man haveth in his pocket, so is it, it don't say that? It said, as a what man? This means that the most important entity in the universe that deserves the most investment is the mind. Feeding the mind knowledge. Feeding the mind wisdom. Feeding the mind good spiritual thoughts and ideas and concepts that rejuvenate the spirit. See, see, inside of the mind lives the heart. And inside the heart lives the soul. Jesus said, what would it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lost his soul? So there is nothing that exists more important than the soul. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that thought travels on the average of 24 billion miles per second. He said that in the head there are 14 billion brain cells. If you look at the shape of a cell, a shell is shaped like a circle. Do you know that any time you have a force moving in a circular motion, it produces one or two forces? One's called centripetal force, and the other's called centrifugal force. Centrifugal force is when an object spins and repels things away from it. Centripetal force is when an object spins and attracts things to it. With the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is showing us at the speed of thought moving around 14 billion brain cells is that whatever the nature is of our thoughts, by the law of centripetal force, we began to attract people, situations, circumstances to our life that match the nature of what we are thinking and repel the opposite. All praise is due to Allah. So in Philippians 4 and 8, it says, Whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Because if you want powerful life, you got to think powerful thoughts. 
If you want a successful life, you got to think successful thoughts. If you want a righteous life, you have to think righteous thoughts in the time and what must be done. And, and for the record, the, the, for the record, that there, 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 there's a verse in the Bible in 317 of Ezekiel that talks about a watchman on the wall for the house of Israel. And it's not talking about the so-called Jews. They have their foot on the neck of Ye or Kyrie Irving or any other black man or woman that stands up for themselves or their people. It's talking about us. We are the real children of Israel. We are the real chosen people of God. All praise is due to Allah. I said the time. It called this man that's on the wall a watchman. If you separate the word watchman in two words, it's watch man. If you invert it, it's a man that is a watch. Well, what makes a watch work? It is whenever there is a quartz crystal inside the watch. The crystal that is inside of the watch is what is, uh, allows it to accurately interpret time. So it is with the crystal that is in the microscope that allows you to look deeper into. So it is a crystal that is curved to look out in a space with a telescope so you can look far away. It's a crystal that's inside the television. It's a crystal inside the radio. If you go to the optometrist, they take a crystal and shape it so you can see things correctly. Do you know that the word crystal and the word Christ come from the same Greek word Christos? So whenever you got a man that is a watch, he's not a man with quartz in him, he's a man with Christ in him. And that is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. How do you know? How do you know? Because you know what time it is when you listen to Farrakhan. How do you know? Because you can see far when you listen to Farrakhan. You can see correct when you listen to Farrakhan. You can see deep into when you listen to Farrakhan. Am I telling the truth? He is that watch man, the man that is the watch. So the next time somebody asks you what time is it, don't look at the movement of the minute and the hours on your watch. Look at the messages that are being delivered by the minister in real time, revelation form, and that's what time it really is. I thank Allah for this most beautiful and most dutiful of all servants. I don't know if there could have ever been a better gift that could have been given to the black man and woman of North America. If you never thought that God loved you, you got to know that God loves us. Look at this precious gift. He gave us in the person of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. All praises are due to Allah. We have to be careful. If the minister said that we are what we eat and even more what we think, we got to be careful what we put in our mind and our mouth. Isn't it something that whenever you look through your social media, they call your timeline your feed? Do you know that just like in the world of food, everything is either toxic or tonic? So it is in the world of thoughts and ideas. Toxic means that which is destructive and harmful to the consumer. Tonic means that which is good, positive, and healing to the consumer. It is what's in our feed. Question is, what's coming across the radio? Question is, what kind of films are we watching on television? And if we are what we eat, and even more what we think, we have to be a guardian of the three gates that make us what we are. The gate of the mouth, the gate of the ear, and the gate of the eye. Because if we are thinking, toxic thoughts, we will begin to magnetize to ourselves toxic people, toxic circumstances, toxic situations. 
But if we are thinking those, those, on those things that are good, that are pure, that are praiseworthy, that are honorable, that are right, then we will begin to attract to ourselves people, situations, and circumstances just like it. All praise is due to Allah. A community is not like a colony. A colony is when the people that live in an environment don't own the businesses or the property in the environment, but a community is when the people that live in that environment actually own the businesses and the property in the environment. See, when you're doing business in an environment and you begin to make profit from your business, it is natural for you to reinvest in what will improve the quality of your own life. But if the people that do business in our community live somewhere else, they take our money and they invest it to increase their quality of life where they live at. So our communities don't have ever benefit from it. But man, imagine if we had all of the necessities of life being supplied by black businesses then every time that the brother down the street with the supermarket and the sister over here with the dry cleaner makes a profit and she invests or he invests some of their profit to improve their quality of life, by proxy they also improve the property value of the neighborhood we live in. We got to go from colony to community. Well, how do we get there? The base word of community is unity. If you ask anybody in any generation of our people, what is the answer for black problems? Go back into 1905, they'll tell you, we just gotta unite. Come up into the 50s, we just gotta unite. Come into the 70s, we just gotta come together and unite. Question, if John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the Word was with God, and the Word, listen to this, was God. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us that is and was is, is in mathematics an equal sign. So whatever's put on one side is the same as what's on the other side. So if, if, if the Word was God, then the power that God has, words have. So question, if in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelled among men. That means that there's a natural maturation of the word. Words don't remain words. Words become actions. Actions become habits. Habits begin to form character, and character produces a future. Nothing that is thought or spoke can stay in thought or word form. At some point, it's going to be real. Well, if we've been talking unity, for all these generations, question is, why don't we have it yet? I submit to you, sisters and brothers, that we have a misunderstood word. Do you know they found that in the study of reading, that if I'm reading a page and I come across a word that I don't understand, if I don't stop and look up the definition of that word and I keep reading, anything I read after the misunderstood word becomes a blank in my mind. So it has been with us as a people, we've been talking unity, but we've been thinking uniformity. I got breaking news for you. Everybody not going to be a kappa. Everybody not going to be a kill. Everybody not going to be Church of God in Christ. Everybody not going to be Baptist. Uniformity is a biological and sociological impossibility. There's not even a blade of grass that is identical. No two snowflakes are alike. Do you know there's not another human being that has the exact pupil or the exact voice pattern or the exact fingerprint of any of us? Not only is there not a living person, but there never has been another one that had the same voice pattern, pupil, or fingerprint you have. So before you, there were none. And after you, there will never be another. You do you one and the only. You unique. We've been thinking uniformity, but we need to be thinking unity. 
In this book, Holy Quran, Allah says to us in three places, he said, surely there's a sign in creation for those who believe. Another verse says there's a message in creation for those who reflect. A message in creation for those who keep their duty. Well, what do you mean, message in creation? Then the God says in the Holy Quran that I created man in the best of modes. So the supreme example of organization can be found in the study of the human body. When you look at the human body, it is not an example of uniformity. It is an example of unity. Uniformity means we all do the same thing at the same place at the same time and we all look the same while we do it. But unity means we do different things at different places at a different time, but for one common cause. The liver doesn't do what the kidneys do. The kidneys doesn't do what the heart does. All these organs in this body do different things at a different time, but for the survival of this one black organism. I wonder what would happen if our organization stopped like that. I said, I wonder what would happen if our organization stopped like that. Everybody, you do your thing where you are. But let's make sure that it makes a contribution for the survival of us as a people. And unity will be ours. All praise is due to Allah. Another problem. Misunderstood word. We think unity only in the horizontal. Brothers and sisters coming together with each other. But there also has to be not just the horizontal unity, but there has to be vertical unity. Where we are not only in unity with one another as brothers and sisters, but we're also in unity with the principles and the laws and statutes of God himself. See, how can we be in unity with each other? How can I be tied and united with a child molester? How are we going to have real unity if you might steal from me? How are we going to be together if you're going to look at my wife when I'm not around? So there has to be a vertical unity where we are united with God and the law of God and principles and character and morals, not just men and women. All praise is due to Allah. Unity. Unity means loving one another. Unity means respecting one another. Unity means supporting one another. Unity means that we look out for each other's children. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad gave us a language. And he said that we are to call each other brothers and sisters. I don't care how big your title is, brother come before it. Sister comes before it. You protocol, you are captain, you are secretary, but you are sister captain. You are brother captain. You are sister minister. You are brother minister. Brother comes first, and every now and then, you got to pull the coattail. When you see us getting so comfortable that we start calling each other just by first name. John, come here, Cindy. Somebody got to say, no, sister Cindy. Why? Because the, the, the more we began to call one another brothers and sisters, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God, meaning God force and power. We keep saying it, it's only a matter of time before we become it. If I'm your brother, my son is your nephew. Your daughter is my niece. So every problem become a family problem. I don't sit off in the corner and gossip about the fallen angel called your son a daughter. That's my nephew. That's my niece. All praise is due to Allah. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said to us that our unity is more powerful than an atomic or a nuclear bomb. There's an MIT article that was written March 2nd, 2022, and they said that the radiation that comes from a nuclear explosion 
is much more destructive than the physical damage the impact causes. So when they dropped the bomb in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, there was one level of damage done by the bomb exploding. But for decades now, radiation has been in the atmosphere, still reaping havoc. Well, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that our unity is more powerful than a nuclear bomb. That means that our unity doesn't just get us great reward in present, but every last one of us are temporary. All of us are finite. We are here and we will go. We are born and we will die. But if we can unite, we can drop this bomb on white supremacy, drop this nuclear weapon, on self-hate, drop this nuclear weapon on poor self-worth, drop this nuclear weapon on the colony and make it a community. Even when we are dead and gone, the radiation from our unity will still be in the atmosphere and our great-grandchildren and their great-grandchildren will live in a better world because of what we did today. All praise are due to Allah. Unity makes a community. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that our unity would solve 95% of our problems. The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad said we must unite or perish. He said we will all be one or nothing. We have to, brothers and sisters, get out of this Eurocentric white man philosophy. I got to get mine. You got to get yours. Every man for himself. That didn't come from us. That didn't come from God. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that no one man could ever rise above the condition of his people. So we either are going to come up together or go down together. There's not going to be one or two that make it and the rest die. We got to survive together. You say it ain't looking good because we all we got. Yeah, we all we got, but guess what? We all we need too. We've got everything we need in mind, money, muscle time, talent, and treasure to build a world for ourselves. All praise is due to Allah. We didn't have this, I got to get mine, you got to get the word yours, this, this Eurocentric selfish thought concept whenever we was in the motherland. Our code was that a Muslim is not a Muslim until they want for their brother and sister what they want for themselves. Our code was each one reach one, each one teach one. Our code was it don't take a mother and a father, it takes a village to raise a child. That's unity. How many, how many of us would get into a fight and try to fight with our fingers? <laughs> Dr. Wesley, I don't know why, I don't know why Pokemon I don't know why Pokemon, I don't know how to. No, whenever you in a battle, when you have to thump, when you have to fight, and, and, and for the record, I want you all to be clear on this, Muhammad don't raise no punks, no sissies, no faggots, or no chumps. Muhammad make men, Muhammad make women that are soldiers and that are warriors. We believe, we believe that Allah is not with the aggressor. We believe that God is not with the aggressor. But we also believe that if you aggress us, we are obligated by God himself to fight with those who fight with us. And we ain't fighting to the busted lip or the blue eye or the bump rear. We are willing to fight to the death. That's the way Muslims operate. All praise is due to Allah. And there ain't gonna be no fair fight. There ain't gonna be no fair fight. Talking about let them go one on one. Now whenever we hear Allahu Akbar, we show up, we don't investigate, we demonstrate and we handle business on whoever's on the opposite side of that and work the facts out later on. 
All praise is due to Allah. You say, I thought you Muslims don't carry no weapons. We don't. But just because you don't carry a weapon don't mean you can't become one. The sinews of the flesh can be organized in a way that is stronger than metal and a bullet. Another lecture for another time. Why do we ball our fists? Why not fight with the finger? Because in unity, there's strength. And for the record, it's not the size of the group that's in the fight. It's the size of the fight that's in the group. A few committed soldiers can handle more business than a whole bunch of scared to death, excuse making, knee shuffling, boot licking, buck dancing, half baked and half fried, scared to death Negroes any day. That's what this book, Quran, says. It says in Surah 866, if there be a hundred of you, you can put a thousand to flight. Is that right? One of my favorite verses of the Holy Quran is in Surah 3, 123 through 155, and say that if you in a drum, in, in drama or in a in a fight, then Allah would assist you with 3,000 angels. And then it, it didn't it say, look, it said, if they come upon you in a headlong manner, that Allah will assist you with 5,000 havoc-making angels. Them the kind of soldiers you want on your team, because they don't care what's going on. All they know is you my brother, you my sister, and I got to help you wherever I can. All praise is due to Allah. In unity, there is strength. Do you know that a Belgium horse by itself can pull 8,000 pounds? But when it's connected with another Belgium horse, they can pull together 25,000 pounds? 8,000 by themselves put together would mean 16,000, but they can do 9,000 pounds more because of unity. Do you know that a goose that is flying in the air or a gander flying by itself can only go 12 miles per hour? But if they are arranged in ranks, in unity, they can fly 65 miles per hour and go 71% farther than what they could go flying all by themselves. Have you ever noticed when you look at the geese fly that when you see them, that one of the, the uh, V's lines seems to be a little longer than the other? Have you noticed that? There's a deep scientific answer for that. On one side, they have one more goose than the other. I thought I'd drop that deep scientific answer. On. I thought I'd just drop that. Do you know that the one that is in the back of the V that makes one line longer is the younger goose or gander that's in the pack? When you hear the geese and the gander flying, you don't hear a whole lot of them squ uh, squawking, but you hear one doing the most. The one in the back's job is to send up encouragement to the other geese and gander flying. That's the job of the one in the back. The one in the back is the young that is studying the way that the elders are moving, studying the way that mama and daddy are making moves. And whenever the one in front gets tired, the one in the back comes and takes the spot. That's how we should be as a people if we want to go from colony to community. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. They have so much love for one another that if one of them falls out and breaks ranks and goes down because of an injury, Two other geese again that will break away from the pack and go down to help nurse their brother and sister back in the shade. Now they do make an investigation. They want to make sure that this is a real reason, not just an excuse. So they start checking the wings, checking the feathers, 
And if they find out that all the feathers are intact and all of the, the wings look proper, they realize there's nothing wrong with the body, something wrong with the mind. That's not a reason. That's an excuse. They leave that one back behind and they go get back with the pack. But if there is an organic problem, a genuine injury, they are two will stay there and nurse the one back in the shape. And then whenever they get strong enough, the three will fly faster and catch back up with the group to be back in unity. I wonder what would happen if we were brotherly and sisterly like that with one another. See, in a community, we don't pray on one another. We pray for one another. In a community, the only thing we shoot at our brother is encouragement, knowledge, inspiration, never a bullet. In a community, we shop with our brother before we shop with another. That's how communities operate. On October 11th in 2015, in closing, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan told us in Washington, D.C., meeting with the group of leadership that were stating to be sincere and wanting to keep the movement alive. Listen to this. He said, there's a creature that has turned a colony into a community. And he instructed us at that time to go and study the ant. Wow. This book, Holy Quran, is the revealed word of Allah. But the revelation is not just bound in the ayats or the verses in the book. There's revelation even in the names of the chapters. Every creature that is used as a name of a chapter has a system, a law, a nature, and a function, a an aim, and a purpose that if we study, we can get revelation from it just like we get from the scripture itself. If we studied the B, Surah 16, just the title alone, we would know how to be brothers and sisters to one another. Why? Because the B lands on different flowers in different places. And it extracts something called pollen, which is the best of each flower. It takes the best from each flower, flower, and then it marries it with the best within itself and performs a task of creating something called honey. And that honey is given to others to provide nourishment, energy, nutrient, and strength. Well, what would happen if wherever we found our brother and our sister, we landed on the best part of them and extracted only the good we can find in our brothers and sisters and married it with the good in ourselves, And we gave the best we got from others with the best to self to our sons, our daughters, and the people we met. We would have healing in our community. In Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6, Solomon, who styled as the wisest man of the Old Testament, he says, study the ant, thou Negro. Learn, learn. <laughs> what? Now, this is, this is not the King James Version. This is LeBron James translation. <laughs> Technically, we have become like sluggers. Just keeping it real. We're styled in the scripture under the name Lazarus. Lazarus had some big problems. He was begging at the gate of the white man, I mean the rich man, for crumbs that fell from the table. It never dawned on Lazarus that he could go and grow his own wheat, grow his own navy bean, and make his own bean pie. He just wanted some crumbs that fell. But if you look at the word Lazarus, phonically it's lazy or us. I'm going to give you some breaking news. 
The number one disease killing us in the black community is not cancer, it's not AIDS, it's not heart disease, it's not COVID-19. The number one disease killing us is excuse-itis. We make too many excuses on why we can't be, do, or have whatever we want to be, do, or have. Well, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad gave us a simple formula to fix that immediately. Say this to yourself and you'll activate the override mechanism in your own brain that will put in check all self-defeating thoughts that have been installed in our mind by commands from my enemy. He said every time you look at a black man, you're looking at God. Look in the mirror and say that and then ask yourself, what can't God do? And if God can do anything he puts his mind to, so can us, so can we. All praise is due to Allah. Why, minister, why? Why study the ant? Do you know that ants always work together in a collective manner? Not one ant knows the other assignment of the other ant. And by not knowing the assignment of the other ant, they have 100% focus on just doing their job. And by having 100% focus on doing their job, not knowing the assignment of another ant, there's no envy or no jealousy or no backbiting among the ants. I wonder what would happen if black people operated like that. Do you know that ants are immune to personal pain? They only care about the group, not about themselves. If you step on an ant, you don't see the ants all hovering around, sad with their head down. Do you? Have you ever uh, kicked over an ant mound? Accidentally or even accidentally on purpose? See, ants know how to handle defeat. When you kick over the ant mound and, and, and you come back outside, you don't see the ants on your porch with picket signs. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. Um, Ungawa, we want ant power. No, the ant just started rebuilding the mound a few inches over. They stay work. They handle defeat. What, what if black people operated like that? We've got to stop begging and start building. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says, God's judgment has already been rendered on white America. Stop getting sad about the fall of America. While we heard about the fall of America, we already on the bottom. If something falling and we already at the bottom, it's not a time for us to get sad. It's time for us to get out the way. Let the thing fall. It deserves to fall. They kidnapped our ancestors. They robbed us of our name, our culture, our religion, our moways, folkways, norms of God. You thought God forgot? So we spend too much time, black people, trying to repair the system when God wants us to replace the system. You got black ants, you got brown ants, you got yellow ants, you got red ants, you even got white ants. The black and the brown get along with each other, the red and the yellow get along with each other, the red and the black get along, but don't none of them get along with the white ant. Surely there's a message in creation for those who believe. You know what the white ant is? A termite. See, termites are always behind the walls, eating away at the, that which supports in their own. Tell me the white man hasn't been like that to every cause, every organization, every agenda we've ever tried to operate. All praise is due to Allah. There are no Negro ants either. How do you know there's no Negro ants? Because when an ant finds a piece of bread, if it was a Negro ant, they would eat it and tuck it. First thing they do when they find it would be look over their shoulder. 
to see if anybody seen that I found this. But the ants, they're so selfless. They think so good for their own community that when an ant finds a piece of bread, he will put enough in his mouth to establish a breadcrumb from the bread all the way back to the colony so that the other ants will know the exact route they need to travel to get to what that ant has earned. I wonder what would happen if all of our millionaires and our business people, our lawyers and our doctors that found a piece of bread would establish a crumb trail back to our community that all the young soldiers would know the exact route that they needed to travel to become what they wanted to be. All praise is due to Allah. Do you know the ants are so selfless that if they have a goal to build on this side and there's no other way to get there and there's a piece of a body of water in front of them, the older ants will sacrifice their lives in the stream or in the water and build a body bridge that the younger ants can climb on their back and still accomplish the objective for their community. I wonder if black people thought like that where we would be. And last but not least, in Charleston, South Carolina, there was a news reporter when the floods hit he seen, as he was reporting the news, what appeared to be a twig coming out of two foot of water that had flooded in the streets. And whenever he put the camera down and they began to look at what they thought was a twig, come to find out it was not a twig. It was a stack of thousands of male elephant, I mean male uh, ants that were stacked on top of each other and gave their life so that their queen ant could survive. I wonder what would happen if the black man had that kind of love for this most precious gift that God has given us, the most loyal to woman of any other woman of any other nationality group or people, this matchless beauty of this black. What if we had that kind of loyalty for us? So I say to us, sisters and brothers, that we can convert our colonies into communities if we will love one another, if we will respect one another, if we will be willing to look out for each other's sons and our daughters, if we would be willing to shoot not a weapon but knowledge, encouragement, and wisdom at one another, if we would be willing to shop with our brother before we shop with another. Last but not least, there can be no organization without the principal recognition of one leader. Well, when the resumes are being presented, there's, the, there's one man that is the last man standing. He's a man that has the most impeccable, longest lasting track record of anybody that has ever stood up for us. 67 years of unconditional love and faith and sacrifice. That one man, that one voice, that one leader we should recognize is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Thank you for listening. I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. Come on, brothers and sisters, put your hands together for Brother Student Minister Nuri Muhammad. What a beautiful message. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. That means God is the greatest. Greetings to you sisters and brothers. This is Steve Muhammad coming to you from Refuge Depot. As we all know, the weather is extreme. We need to prepare our homes to become a sanctuary and not a cemetery. Please go to refugedepot.com or click in the description below to find all your disaster preparedness items and survival techniques. That's refugedepot.com or click in the description below. If you have any questions, please call 937-985-0779 or email refugedepot at gmail.com.